Okay, so now in this demonstration, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a slab for a relief piece. So it's similar to the other demonstration, the last one, except that instead of making a small slab that you would use to build with, I'm actually just gonna make a larger slab so that you can use it as a base and then create forms to then score and attach onto it. So this time you should have gotten about two and a half pounds of clay. So, you know, I would use the majority of it right now just to make the slab because once the slab is formed, you can always cut off the excess and then add that to the remaining amount of clay that you have left. And then that's what you can use to create your forms that you'll be putting on top of the relief. So right here, I've got the rest of it, of you know, the stuff that I'm using for the slab. So right now um, it's in separate pieces. It knows that it's in separate pieces right now. So you basically need to start wedging it to not only get the air bubbles out, but to make it one whole clay body so that you're essentially taking control of the clay and you are showing it who's boss. So anyhow, um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. And so you can see, again, I'm gonna go ahead and start wedging. You're just gonna push forward, roll back. And I'm gonna do this a few times. I don't have to get super fancy with it, but again, we want to definitely get air bubbles out and we want to make it one clay body. Now, the fact that this clay is never gonna go into a kiln, the air bubbles in reality don't really matter as much. The reason why I'm showing you to do this though with this clay is because it's good practice. Because if you were to use uh, regular clay that you would normally use in ceramics, you would have to get the air bubbles out because that clay would definitely be going into a kiln eventually. So notice I'm right? Using some muscle, wrenching down on it a little bit. My cloth likes to move around on me. That's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. And now I'm going to pull back. All right. So pulling back. And if anything, you could just roll it back towards yourself. The pushing forward just kind of anchors it, but then you're going to pull it back. As you can see, I'm almost there. It's normal to have these little creases. This is just typical of what uh, wedge clay starts to look like. So I'm gonna just do this one more time. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on it, but it's important to just try and get the clay even. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna roll back. Okay, so. Here it is. <laughs> Here's uh, the wedge, uh, wedged bit of clay that we're going to turn into a slab. So just like the last video, I used my hands mostly. I'm going to start out using my hands and then I'll end using the rolling pin a little bit because I want to make sure that I'm showing you two different methods of creating the slab. And really it's just a personal preference. It's whatever you prefer doing, okay? Um, either one takes a little bit of muscle, but n neither of them is going to hurt your hand. You'll be fine. Anyone can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and again, use the side of my hand. I can also use the bottom of my palm, but I, for me, it's just something I do naturally. I just use the side of my hand. So I'm going to go ahead and start compressing the clay some more. So we're also continuing to get out air bubbles as we're making the clay flatter. And right now it's super thick, you can see that, but now I'm starting to compress it down. I'm gonna keep going here. Also, if you have anything on the table, like I kinda do, I have this butter knife handy, I've got a ruler, I'm gonna go ahead and put off to the side, just because um, it's gonna make a little bit of a shaky sound but that way I don't have stuff bouncing and flying all over the place because I am applying pressure and therefore it's creating a force. I'm gonna keep going here. I'm just gonna keep pounding this thing out. Again, it's 
it's nice to use your hand just to start because you can really get the majority of it handled. And yeah, it's gonna be a little noisy. It's gonna be a little loud, but you're working, right? And you're working with your hands. Just flipped it over. Again, that's why the cloth is handy. Any kind of cotton cloth, and again, some sort of structured board is good. A cutting board will work. And right now it's forming a kind of like an oval shape, which is pretty normal. I can stay with a circular or oval shape. Um, it just depends on what I want for my base shape. You guys had four different choices that I thought would be best. A rectangle, a square, a triangle, or a circular form. My drawing, I have more of a square, so I could go with that. But you can go with whatever shape you prefer. Okay. And right now I'm going to also use my palm. So I'm really, really compressing this. And remember, guys, you're going to a quarter inch you're going to between a quarter inch and a half inch. All right. So far, so good. I've got this, that's a pretty large slab comparatively to the other one. And I'm gonna actually just go for a rectangle right now for the sake of demonstration. I can also use this shape for when I start to show you how to map out your design, which you came up with from your plans, from your drawings, onto the clay, and then of course start creating your forms to then score on top of your of your drawing that will be on your clay so you're going to take the drawing you made you're going to make those similar designs onto your clay using a tool and then you can actually use that as a guide for where you're going to end up scoring and then sticking your forms okay so i'm thinking in reality, with what I have going on here, I'm just gonna grab my butter knife too because I'm gonna need to trim off the sides here. I'm thinking that realistically, measurement-wise, I'm gonna do about a seven by four inch rectangle. I think that will give me enough room just to get a little something on there. Um, also, I wanna note that This thickness is good. You really don't want to go much thinner than this. Um, this is probably just over a quarter inch. But remember, the thinner you get, um, it's going to be flimsy until it sets up. And also, once you start adding the forms on top of it, it's also going to add weight. So just take that into consideration when you're trying to make this, because this is really the supporter piece here. OK, so here we go seven inches. I'm going to go as close to the edge as I can so I can get as much out of this piece of clay for a slab. So right now I'm cutting the seven inches. Boom. Got that. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut the four inches here. If you want to make yours bigger or you want to use more of the extra clay, you can do that. Um, again, this is just the point of showing you how to go about using these techniques and doing this process. There's a seven. I'm going to show you after I make these marks before I actually cut the edges off. So that way you can see what I'm doing because the camera angle is kind of tough. So I want to make sure that you get all that information. Okay. Oops. <laughs> and here we are. I'm trying to hold this up for you. So you can see that I made the rectangle on here. 
Super simple. Now I'm gonna commit, I'm gonna actually cut off the sides. There goes one. Again, extra clay for me to use for my forms and put over here with uh, that stuff. More. Here's the other short side. And then finally, the other long side. All right. So again, I still have a lot of clay to use for the rest of the project. Okay, so here we go. I've got my seven inch by four inch rectangle. Um, again, depending on what shape you decide to make, you can use different dimensions. I'm gonna be pretty flexible with the dimensions, um, but I probably would try to stay about the size if you're making a rectangle. A square, I think you can go a little bit smaller than seven inch, or excuse me, shorter than seven inches on one of the sides, and then definitely more than four inches. So you could probably get away with maybe five or six inches for each side of your square. I would probably do the same thing with each of the three sides of a triangle. And then with a circle, you're just dealing with diameter. So just probably, I would go with maybe probably about a six inch diameter, I think would be sufficient. So anyhow, I've made this slab now, and this is gonna be what I'm gonna use for my relief. I'm gonna quickly show you what my drawing is, and for the next demo that you guys check out, you're going to um, see me actually take the design and then create it on top of the piece. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up for you. Okay, so we've got two different forms that I'm going to work with. This is similar to the um, second drawing that you did. So again, this is more of a square, not a rectangle, but I decided to go with a rectangle instead for this for demonstration purposes. But ideally, um, I would prefer to have this more in a square shape for the base shape. And then these are the forms, the two different forms, very simple, that I would be applying onto that relief. Okay. 